Deberg. Here. Eber. Here. Serta. Here. Davis. Here. Graf. Here. Kittleson. Here. Manny. Here. Meyer. Here. Montemayor. Here. Radke. Here. Sigali. Here. Stefan. Here. Susha. Here. And Vanderweel. Here. Fifteen present. Quorum's present. Approval of the minutes. Alvin Graf. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that the minutes of the meeting of the of April 25th be approved and um, we suspend with the reading of them and, and we approve them as uh, they're entered on the record. <clears throat> Motion and second. Under discussion? <coughs> Not all those in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. At this time I'd ask that you join us in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. Alderman D. Berg, please lead us. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Alderman Berg. Resignations, Attorney McLean. Dated April 19th from uh, Mayor Perez. As a consequence of being elected mayor, I hereby tender my resignation as alderman for the second district effective immediately. That can be accepted in the final. And uh, this is dated April 23rd. It's a letter of notice of resignation from the City uh, Historic Preservation Commission by Robert Hecker. Accept and file. We'll accept and file that. Appointments. Uh, Mayor's appointments. Mr. submit the following appointment for your consideration. Scott Lewandowski to be considered for appointment to the Historic Preservation Commission to fill the unexpired term of Robert Ecker, whose term expires 4306, signed by the mayor. That will lie over. Everybody submit the following appointments for your consideration. Public Protection and Safety Committee, Alderman Renee Susha, Chairman, Alderman Silas Vanderweel, Vice Chairman. Alderman Jeff Radke, Alderman Vicki Meyer, Alderman Marilyn Montemeyer, and Law and Licensing Committee, Alderman Richard Manny, Chairman, Alderman Jeff Radke, Vice Chairman, Alderman Vicki Meyer, Alderman Mark Sigali, and Alderman Gene Davis, signed by the Mayor. Alderman Graf. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd ask for suspension of the rules. Second. There's a motion, uh, second to suspend the rules. Is there any objection? Proceed. Then, Your Honor, I would move that your appointments be confirmed. There's, there's a motion and a second under discussion. Under discussion, I'd like to read a little statement. Members of the Common Council, it is time to come to a full circle. It is time to unite this council. As elected leaders of this great city of Sheboygan, we are entrusted to take the initiative to do what is right and move this city forward for the benefit of those 52,000 plus citizens that depend on us, that trust us to be bigger than we sometimes see ourselves as being. All these people, including the children, have placed our hopes, our dreams, and their future in our hands. I am prepared to lead by example. I have been challenged by some of you to demonstrate my willingness to work together. While a majority of you confirm all my committee appointments during the last council meeting, my appointments to the public protection and safety were not confirmed because some of you felt differently. I am accepting your challenge to demonstrate, by example, my willingness to work with you. I have decided to make a strong, convincing gesture of good faith and teamwork. I want to thank Alderman Groff, President of the Common Council, Alderman Marilyn Montemayor, Chairman of the Committee of the Whole, for their suggestions and ideas on how to unite this council. Both have shown great leadership. Therefore, I have decided to appoint Alderman Manor Wheelie as Vice Chairman of the Public Protection and Safety Committee. I believe this appointment will address the concerns some of you may have had so that we can move forward as a team. I would also like to thank Alderman Davis for agreeing to be, uh, be moved from the Public Protection and Safety to another committee. Remember, there will always be negative people out there who will try to inject ugliness and negativism into what we do or are trying to do. Please take the high ground and the people of Sheboygan are sure to be the beneficiaries of our great work. I ask that you confirm my appointments tonight. Let us put bad times 
and bad feelings behind us. I want to move the city forward, and I need you, every one of you next to me, to do it. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? If not, we'll call a vote. Alderman Berg. Thank you, Your Honor. I'll go along with the Law and Licensing Committee, but as far as the Public Protection and Safety Committee, which is a very, very important committee, you yourself in this report says several, de several city departments and both Alderman Perez and Manny, it can take an average of one year for an elected official to understand enough about the system to actually participate in a competent manner. They are provided with a manual that advises them of basic terminology and procedures, but it is cumbersome and difficult to understand. This means that many of them are going to be flying blind, so to speak, for the entire first year of their elected terms. Now, there's enough first year all the persons on that committee that I don't think we should be having on there because of the fact that you're, you're, you yourself are saying they're going to be flying blind. And that's a very important committee, not only for the police and fire departments, but for, for, for the safety of the people of Sheboygan. Thank you. Here. And those are very good points, Alderman Berg. I have looked at those committee appointments. I trust that these people will do a job, a good job. And I must say, however, that I wasn't there before either. I'm new to this job. People trusted me to do a good job. I don't know the terminology. I don't know a lot of the rules, but you know what? I will learn them. People had faith in me. 54% of the people said, we want you to be our mayor. They weren't too worried about how much I knew about the mayor's position. So in this case, I have selected those people. I believe in them, and I would ask the rest of the council members believe in them too. And let's demonstrate by our actions our willingness to work together. Is there any other discussion? We'll take a vote. All those in favor, state, state aye. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. I'm sorry, what? I'm sorry. Alderman Sadler. Thank you, Your Honor. I just want to make sure that I fully understood you. So according to the words that you stated, that you felt that freshman alderman, that it takes a full year to understand the concepts um, and the procedures, that you're willing to make an exception in this case for public protection and safety for the freshman alderman? according to your words that you stated here? I'm not making exceptions. What I'm doing is making appointments to the best of my ability okay. based on what I feel I see in, in the people. Okay. And Thank one you. of the main changes that I made is Alderman Mander will be being vice, uh, president, vice chairman of that committee, and he was last year. There's some continuity there, and he, I'm sure that he will be able to help uh, lead the committee too. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Roll call. Okay. Madam Clerk, roll call. Okay, and I vote would be to confirm. Everybody understand? Uh, Bauman? Aye. D. Berg? Nope. E. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Groff? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Sigali? No. Stefan? Aye. Susha? Aye. And Vanderweel? Aye. Uh, 13 ayes, 2 noes. Appointments confirmed. Thank you. Next item, Aurora Health Foundation presentation. And I'd ask uh, Mr. Sawar to please step up. Sure. Well, Mayor and uh, members of the council and residents of the city, uh, the mission of the Aurora Health Foundation is to promote wellness in the community. And on behalf of the foundation, uh, I am proud to present a check for $8,000, uh, which will be used for fitness equipment along the trail, along our beautiful shoreline. Uh, so I am proud to present you this check, Mayor, and we are thrilled to see this dream become a reality. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Great presentation, thank you again, and thank you Mr. Dave Beeble for coordinate, coordinating this, thank you. Get this 
Next we have aldermanic candidates, comments, and we have five individuals who have shown an interest in being considered for the vacancy that uh, exists in the uh, second district. They are Mr. John Hill, Mr. Donald Van Akron, Mr. Jack Westfall, Mr. James Reinald, and Mr. Derek Rupp. Each, can each uh, candidate will have three minutes to address the council. And at this time, I'd ask Attorney McLean to uh, shuffle the names to see who would uh, speak for us. You want to do it or do it? First will be John Hill. Mr. Hill. Mr. Mayor and Council Members, as editorial page editor of the Sheboygan Press, I often lamented the lack of candidates for local office. Unfortunately, many people in the second district paid attention to that. As the editorial page editor, I became a prospective taker. I wrote more than 2,500 editorials during my 12 year career, covering most of the major issues of the city. And I learned to look at issues from both sides and come up with a solution that satisfied the most people in the best way. I also became a good listener, and if I am appointed tonight, I will listen carefully to all of the aldermen and try to understand their perspective. I also would be a good listener Sir, for the people of the second district. If I'm appointed, I would hold listening sessions at parks throughout the second district this summer, and I intend to listen very carefully when I run for this office next year. I'm also a team player, and I would also, I would seek to work well with each and every one of the council members. I believe in the last election, the people sent a message that they need, that they wanted a new perspective. I bring that new perspective to this I can bring this new perspective to the council. That doesn't mean I'd be neutral on the issues. I strongly support our police department, and I believe it's time that we get the police station built. But there are a lot better places to build it, I believe, than Sheridan Park. I strongly support our park system. As an urban planner for the city of Milwaukee in a former career, I worked at planning parks and recreation, and I know their importance for recreation and for stabilizing neighborhoods. I also stand for frugal stewardship of our taxpayer dollars. I'm proud to be a citizen of Sheboygan and would be proud to serve the second district as alderman. Thank you very much for considering my application. Thank you, Mr. Hill. <laughs> okay. James Rhinel. Mr. Rhinel. Take the mic. No, no. Please, please, please go around, sir. We'll wait for you. We'll wait for you. Please go around. I'm a lifelong citizen of the city of Sheboygan and a taxpayer. Those are my biggest qualifications. And the first thing I'd like to say is uh, Mayor Perez did a good job on the school board. He was lauded. And he took a, a common house here that was a blight in the city and fixed it all up right across from the police department here and uh, put on, took care of the lawn, put in a garage. Looks beautiful. And uh, he uh, ran for election. The pe taxpayers want someone in there that's going to make a change. 
and I don't know why the old council members are still giving them a hard time. I think they should work together a little better than that. Now in regard to the police department, I, uh, when it comes to downsizing, I mean, I'm in favor of the police department, well, everybody is. But you talk about downsizing a place, this is a perfect place to downsize. You've got surveillance cameras now, you've got CBs, you've got cell phones. People are, are calling in, they're taking care of things, they're watching things. If there's too much book work, there's typists that work cheap. Uh, years ago, we had rent the cops that would work at picnics. You didn't have to pay a lot of overtime. The last mayor could, could not say no to the police department. When he asked, when uh, chief asked for anything, he got it. At uh, January of 04, the, the mayor had said, no more hiring of police, uh, policemen. He hired two about a month or two later, then he hired four more, then he hired six more. He just couldn't say no. Another thing I see around is all the cars. The, I, I've traveled with the Naval Reserve for 33 years and, and the Army Reserve. I've never seen such new cars at a police department. Every two years, they have to have new ones. And was not, when there's nothing doing around here, there's, there's eight cars parked around this place. Two on that side, two on that side, two there, two there. If uh, they'd put them all together, people would say, hey, man, what are we doing with all those cars, you know? They could cut down a little bit on the money there. This place is like a fortress. I think they should stay right here. They don't have to upsize at all. Sheridan Park seems too small anyway. And the 23rd Street with the county building, that would be a perfect place, if any. I don't know if the county would work with us. I just can't see them telling us they have to have a car lot in the city of Sheboygan to run when the city of Sheboygan is supposed to take care of that end. And another thing, well, that's called shared expenses. Another thing, uh, the county just uh, 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 let Walmart come in because they thought the city of Sheboygan would annex that land and then sell it to Walmart, and they would lose a big tax base. What a poor reason for letting a big store like that in. Walmart caused J.C. Penney, in my estimation, and Piggly Wiggly to go out of business. And uh, manager Piggly Wiggly said no, but a Milwaukee expert on the subject said yes, there was a reason. The stores in the mall are all disappearing. Why? Because of Walmart. When you put a Walmart on one end of the town and the other end of the town, they're going to wipe out all the small businesses. And how important are the small businesses? There was a, a, a vote amongst a bunch of nations. All the nations where they all speak different languages, they all had one thing in common that they agreed to. And that was uh, the most happy people and the most productive are the people that are in their own business. Excuse me, Mr. Rimo. Your three minutes are up, sir. Well, I got more. You know, I'm a private citizen and uh, I'm a taxpayer and I don't get a chance to get up here very often. Could I have another minute or two here? Uh, Mr. Mayor? Huh? Mr. Reynolds, please continue. <laughs> oh, that no hit me in the face. Okay, um, <laughs> there are good things in Sheboygan. I'm not knocking everything. I, I believe that your shanties that were fixed up along the river is good. Kohler Golf Course is good. He does a good job. Veterans Park with the memorial is beautiful. I like the, uh, a, a very fine water park that's good for the children. Softball complex, the marina. The marina, I see a kind of the lake. I see it a mall, but that's starting to disappear. Central High School is great. It's, uh, they condemned it once, the school condemned it once, but it's, uh, it's a very workable building and they're still using it. Lake Fishing, the Armory on Balrath Bull. The Armory, in regard to Armory, I, Armory, I can't see why uh, they're trying to get rid of the Armory. Look how much we use that. We just had a circus there for the children. Uh, they had a boxing match there, but there's so many things they can do with that. I don't know why, know why they're trying to wipe it out. So I got one more page, I'll try to cut this real quick. Um, in regard to uh, ethanol plant, you know when it comes to an ethanol plant, if they would come in and say, let's give the city of Sheboygan some stocks in our company, let's give them a big break. Maybe they could get in here then. All these businesses come in here and they, we've got the town already and they, they come right in there and they make a, a, a bunch of uh, a profits on us, on the city of Sheboygan. The city of Sheboygan people, if they want to invest, they have to go and invest in stocks and bonds in something they don't know about. Why can't they just take their time a little bit more and, and be able to invest? And it takes a little longer. We could use our own workers. Every time somebody comes in like that, they use our own workers. And then here's one more thing I want to tell you, that the city of Sheboygan is cut off by the lake, and we don't have to pay for a lot of money on tourist trade. That's the state's job. 
I was in the Milwaukee Sentinel Agency, and uh, a, a Manitowoc, Sheboygan, Port Washington, and Milwaukee had a big problem getting new papers, whereas uh, Fond du Lac, uh, Appleton, and Green Bay could get starts just like that because they had people coming in from all sides. We're just a little town here. We don't, uh, we don't have to pay for all the things that the state should be paying for. If people want to see the lake, they'll come here and see the lake. And uh, I'll, I'll end it here. I've got a couple more things, but... Uh, Thank you, Mr. Reinel. Thank you very much. Jack Westfall. Uh, good evening, Mr. Mayor and all the persons and also citizens. Um, for those of you that read uh, my background papers, you know that I would bring a solid um, and demonstrated set of uh, skills and problem solving approaches to the council uh, for the growth of this city. I think those are vital, particularly at this time. Um, probably familiar, if, if you read those materials, my work in Racine, in which they had some similar problems. Um, and as a consultant, I went down there uh, we worked with the neighborhoods, interviews, discussion groups, finally a door-to-door -door survey throughout the city, and uh, the citizens there came up with a solution for their particular problem, and that was centering economic growth around uh, neighborhood police centers. Um, you're familiar with my work in the area of strategic alliances, mergers and acquisitions, and how you can bring different organizations together, taking their competitive advantages and complement each other, and uh, really moving things forward in that way. Um, so th those are some of the skills and the uh, ways I approach things that I'd like to bring to the council. Um, have you know quite a few decades experience in that area and I'd be uh, consider a real privilege to uh, represent the people of my district and use my background in that way. That's all, any questions? Thank you, Mr. Westphal. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Eric Rupp. Mayor Perez and members of the Common Council, I thank you for giving me this opportunity to be heard. I would like your support for the aldermanic seat in the second district. I am a lifelong resident of Sheboygan. I graduated from Sheboygan North and attended UW Platteville, where I studied criminal justice and political science. I sit on the board of directors for, for a 501c3 corporation, where I served as chief financial officer. I am currently employed by Chris Bell Snyder, a civil engineering firm that handles the day-to-day -day needs of many muni municipalities in the southeast part of Wisconsin. Within two years, I was promoted to senior engineering tech the equivalent of project engineer. As part of my responsibilities, I study the needs of our clients and recommend solutions to be implemented into the ever-growing needs of these communities. I was given the opportunity by the citizens of Sheboygan to run for mayor in the past spring election. As part of my bid, I had the pleasure of going door to door and talking to well over 1,000 constituents. They shared with me their concerns, thoughts, and what makes Sheboygan a great city to live. We have challenges before us, and by working together, we can overcome what lies before us and continue, continue to move in a, our city ahead. I thank you for your time and consideration and look forward to the opportunity, opportunity to serve with you. Don Van Akron. Thank you. <clears throat> Good evening, everyone. Many of you on the council have already known me. I am Don Van Akron, former alderman of the second district. You all have my resume and personal information in front of you, so I won't cover this tonight. But I do want to tell you why I feel I'm the best candidate for the open seat in the second district. 
I have lived in the second district for over 50 years. I have the honor and privilege to be re represent the people of the second district for the last 18 years. And it's, it is that experience that I can bring to the Common Council. I have served on many council committees over the last 18 years, and I would look forward to bringing my experience to any committee you assign me to. I'd like to congratulate the new members of the council and Mayor Perez. I'm looking forward to working with all of you over the next year. It's time we all start work together for the good of the citizens of Sheboygan. I want to thank you for giving us this time this evening and ask for your support for the appointment to the second district seat. Thank you. This time we'll have the election of Alder Person for District 2. Alder McGraw. Thank you, Your Honor. At this time, I would move that voting for the office of Alder Person of District 2 be done by open ballot. The candidate with the lowest number of votes be dropped from the list and the balloting to continue until one candidate receives a majority. There's a motion and a second under discussion. Not all those in favor, state aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. I remember you'll have to put your name on these as well. Uh, the voting results are uh, Don Van Akron, eight votes, John Hill, two, Jack Westfall, five, James Reinel, and Derek Rupp, zero. Donnie Van Akron takes Mr. it Van with Akron. eight votes. Congratulations. <laughs> and you're welcome to take the seat. You can't vote yet, but you can take oh, the seat. Thank you. I know it's time and it's boring to take the seat. Very good, sir. Thank you.
Okay, moving along to public forum, uh, City Clerk Richards. Give me one second. Um, first on the list is Dan Verhasselt. If you would just uh, hold on a minute. Just go ahead, but hold on a minute. Alderman Sagali. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Can we please open up a window? Sure. Sure. I'm very Somebody. Well. Thank you. That's a little Thank stuff you. in here. Uh, Mr. Verhasselt, can you give me your home address again, please? 705 Fairway Drive. Fairway. And you will have five minutes, sir. Thank you. I'd like to thank everybody tonight for the opportunity to speak. And I'd like to congratulate Mayor Perez. Uh, your leadership in the first few weeks, I think, brings a common sense class and experience with people. I think we're going to talk to you about it. I'd also like to congratulate Alderman Graff on your appointment to leadership of the council. I think you're a real class act and you're a true asset to this council. So I wish you all the best. I'm here tonight to speak on behalf of Sheridan Park, the preservation of Sheridan Park. The past Common Council used a lot of rhetoric to sway the opinion of the public. But as the nearly 4,000 petition signatures in the recent elections pointed out, citizens weren't buying what the old council was selling. So for the sake of the old, of the old veteran Common Council members, I share this quote that was gathered by E.C. McKenzie. And it goes like this. Wise people sometimes change their minds, but fools never do. Let me say that one more time. Wise people sometimes change their minds, but fools never do. For the sake of the new common council members, now considering the station dilemma, I'd like to discuss some of the myths that have been being given to destroy Sheridan Park. Number one myth is that Sheridan Park is the cheapest site. As everything was indicated in the Moya report, we can have a bigger, safer, and less expensive site at the 23rd Street location. This is after the green roof is taken off of the Sheridan site, the salt shed is built, and the parking lot is swapped. We can still have a cheaper, site, a cheaper station. John Zimmerman, Chief Kirk's own architect, actually agreed with Moyer in saying that a flatter piece of land would allow a cheaper, less expensive building. So how can you tell your people that Sheridan is a cheaper site when you have absolutely no facts to support it? Myth number two, we need a central station. I've not seen a bit of research to indicate that a central station is more effective than one that is slightly off center. And I'd, I'd, I'd be more than welcome to look at that piece of information. In the grander scheme of things, I consider the 23rd Street site as central as anything, if you look at the entire city. Myth number three, nobody uses the park. I've got tons of pictures, and I'm, perhaps most of you have seen those over the last nine months. But more importantly, I've got 60 children who have signed a petition. It's obviously meaningless in a, in a situation like this, but it's meaningful in the standpoint that 60 children cared enough to sign their name. It took some of them two to three minutes to sign their name, granted. I've got over 300 adults in the park neighborhood, and I've got over 3,000 people in this city who want to save that park. So don't tell me nobody uses the park. Myth number four, the station will reduce crime simply by being there. I've never seen any research like this either. And again, I'm here tonight just to present the facts. I'm not trying to throw rhetoric out there, as I think a lot of the opposition has. Two years of research from the Chicago Police Department, I think it was back in the mid-90s, showed that crime is lowest near green spaces like parks. Specifically, there's 56% less violent crime and 48% less property crime near park spaces and green spaces. This is actually from police reports in a University of Illinois study. So I actually see it the other way around. Myth number five, the Moyer Report was flawed. I hear Alderman Berg, Alderman Serta, Alder Person Serta, and Sigali Vanderweel say it was a flawed report for simple and small reasons like the green roof. We have a $3 million edge by going to 23rd Street site. The green roof only represents three to $400,000 of that. So there's still significant savings going there. All right. These are just some of the myths being floated around to help destroy a historic Sheridan Park. My point is this. When the rhetoric is wiped away and all the, all the facts do support the 23rd Street site. It's cheaper. It offers the possibility of expansion and shared services. It's central to the city. The majority of your constituents want it there, believe it or not, and it is cleared and ready to be built upon today. There's nothing in our way. Unlike my opposition, I'm not making up false rhetoric to further my cause. I'm simply giving you the cold hard facts, and I'm hoping that there are enough wise people in this room willing to change their minds. Thank you. is Chris Balassi.
Chris, could you give could you give me your home address, please? 1125 Kentucky Avenue. And you will have five minutes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, citizens, everybody. My parents, my grandfather, bought the home that we reside in, that my parents reside in, which will be passed on to me or my younger brother since 1943 on the corner of 13th and Penn. I came back to the city from Chicago and from Milwaukee, two much larger cities than Sheboygan. Where I lived was 21st and National in Milwaukee. 2nd Street Station was probably the most beautiful station there is, and it was old. But around the area, the homes were older and kept up. Park across the street. When I lived in Chicago, I lived near the Skokie Station, which was, again, near a park, around a school, clean, everything around the area. Contrary to what the last gentleman said, I don't know if anybody's been around uh, or involved in a cleanup of a property. I would never in my life buy a property that needed cleanup without that original owner paying for that cleanup. I did that when I bought Shorty's on 11th in, or uh, 7th in Kentucky. The first owner, he pays for the cleanup, not me. This is a big issue with me because if we have to put it on 23rd Street and we have to clean it up, that's a lot of money, that's a lot of time that we have to engulf. My, our tax dollars shouldn't go for cleaning it up. They should pay for that. With that said, around our neighborhood, from basically <clears throat> Penn to Clara, it's pretty bad. You drive down our alley and Don Van Akron and Mr. Beeble can attest to that when you go down our alley, which the city uses for garbage, it was pretty bad. They went to bat for us and blacktopped it. But if you see down, down the alley, graffiti signs, dilapidated buildings, one house to the, to the west of us, of course, Adina Maitland House, who cares, right? We do. We've gotten some drug people out of the houses that were there. One, one neighbor called the police 27 times in one day to get these people out. We work hard to do it, but without Mr. Vanderwilly, Mr. Van Akron, who did come to the area and saw the problems that were there, without their help and the police department, we wouldn't have had that opportunity to do that. And we appreciate that from them. And I thank you folks for putting Donnie back on. He deserved it. Thank you very much. Next on the list is Mr. Kozan. Mr. Kozan, please. Mr. Kozan, can you give me your home address again, please? 2829 Erie Avenue. And did you wish the request that you gave me last time, yes. would you like me to warn you when it's one minute? Uh, could you also warn me when it's two minutes and then <laughs> one minute, too? No 30 Ooh. seconds or 15 seconds, that's okay. Okay, you have five minutes, sir. Okay. Thank you very much. Appreciate the opportunity to address you uh, one more time. Uh, I've heard the Engberg report criticized as being flawed, as being biased. I would, uh, again, as I did last time, maintain that the Kimmy report is not a perfect example of an objective evaluation. Once again, I would like to bring your attention to the fact that the weighted variables that were used, each category was a variable. Each category was assigned a weight from five points to one point, and each site was evaluated. And then that was multiplied by the weight, and you got a total. Well, the interesting thing is the variables are not universal, like the National Electrical Code. It varies from city to city, from site to site. When I, I called Kimmy Associates, I talked with an engineer there, and he volunteered to me the fact that the weighted variables are unique to each project, and they are determined with the local people to reflect the local people's values. What's wrong with that? Well, in the Kimmy report, 
it says that the staff team was responsible for evaluating each category. The interesting thing is the staff team is not identified anywhere in the Kimmy report. And I assert now, as I asserted before, that the people who were the staff team who determined the variables and who made the evaluations were the building use committee people who had an agenda. There were no categories for open space, for historical preservation. And if those were considered, it would have changed the picture. Also, in terms of objectivity, as I understand, there were no soil borings taken. And yet, the 23rd Street site was dismissed because of mm, contamination problems. Well, that led to faulty assumptions about the costs. And then the topic of communications, an important topic. This was relegated to the appendix. And this is a safety issue because it would uh, have allowed the police and fire department headquarters to be connected. And according to the appendix, this would enhance the county emergency operations center and the city's disaster contingency plan. Also, I suspect in the future there will be a fiber optic line sent to the fire department headquarters. It will be costly, but they'll ask for it because it'll provide redundancy. You need several systems of communications because when one fails, you have to have a fallback to rely on. If you're going to send fiber optics to the police headquarters, two you minutes. could connect. Two minutes? Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Another factor, if in fact there is a municipal court in, included, uh, I didn't do this, Sarah Resch did the math on this, you can't possibly meet the demands of parking for that court at the Sheridan Park site unless you take the adjacent residential areas. And that will have an impact on the tax base. And you see impact on the tax base was 10 points of the mere 19 points that separated Sheridan Park from the Imperial Motel. So there are many reasons to reevaluate your position. Now, I've just talked about intellectual things, rational things. There is another part of human nature, and that's feeling and emotion. And I think feeling is a strong part of decision making. Thank you. When the council back in 1888 dedicated that park to Sherman, they had a good reason to. He was a hero. You see, the park was preceded by the school. In 1886, they built the school to honor the living man. In 1888, within months of his death, they sent his widow notice that they were going to honor him. And why? He was one of the three heroes of the Civil War in the North. There was Grant, there was Sherman, and there was Sheridan. And I would like to come back and tell you that story. And I'd also like to tell you of a sad thing that I saw on an episode of This Old House about how the memory of servicemen was dishonored. Thank you. Next on the list is Anthony Bonet. Anthony, I need your home address, please. Uh, it's 2906 North 6th Street. North 6th Street. And you will have five minutes, sir. Thank you. Good evening. I want to thank the Sheboygan Common Council, city employees, and citizens of Sheboygan that I worked with during my tenure as administrative officer. I am not here to protest the actions of Mayor Perez removing me from my office. What he has done is legal and was at his discretion, although what is legal does not always coincide with what is right. I believe our elected officials should be held to a highest level of accountability. And the fact that Mayor Perez also targeted my wife, Jill Bonet, is fundamentally wrong. Mayor Perez went so far as submitting a document to Common Council on his first night as mayor, attempting to illegitimately remove her midterm from the library board. This was a blatant attempt to circumvent circumventing the Common Council's authority. He claims he regrets the mistake. He would, have to, he would have us believe only mistake was my wife out of 150 appointments. We believe the only thing he regrets is getting caught and having to apologize. 
Our new Mayor Perez, on his first night of serving in office, made the following statements. These are direct quotes from the Sheboygan Press on April 20th. You wanted your voices to be heard, and they will be. Well, seemingly, by my observation, after working with Perez for three years as an alderman and two hours as an administrator, the only voices Mayor Perez wants to hear are the ones that agree with him. He also said, we will treat everyone impartially, decently, respectfully, and compassionately. I kind of figure that kicking the mayoral administrative officer out of his office in the first two hours while targeting his family does not meet these goals. Some of these claims that Mayor Perez, some of these claims that Mayor Perez made that evening included, we can no longer afford to isolate ourselves and we must reach out to others if we are to succeed. Now, we can only conclude that he has either missed his own boat or that we have a mayor that says one thing and does another. Mayor Perez needs to learn that a wise and effective leader draws strength from the diversity of opinions, not fearing alternate views and then oppressing them. I feel that it is my duty to alert the Common Council of another detail. Due to Mayor Perez refusing to speak to me and his only concern being on how soon I could remove myself from the office, this has resulted in no, man, no one managing several large pending claims with a potential loss to the city of $75,000 each. This was only confirmed today after contacting CIVMIC, the city's and village's mutual insurance company, because they had not been notified of the city of Sheboygan lacking a risk management officer. While this coincides with a lack of action on the part of Mayor Perez to address the needs of this critical function, Mayor Perez must be either fiscally foolish or ignorant of the importance of risk management. I feel the Common Council needs to take action to address this issue for the well-being of the city of Sheboygan because the mayor has not. Thank you for your time and God bless. Say Sheboygan. And, and finally on the list, Mike Warner. Mike, can you give me your home address, please? It's 2327 East Shelley Court, Sheboygan. East Shelley? East Shelley Court, correct. And you will have five minutes. And thank you very much. Good evening, Mayor, Council, and citizens of Sheboygan. First, I thank you for this opportunity to speak, uh, and I wish to address several, s several key issues that are facing the city. Number one is the building of Sheridan Station. Regardless of its location, a new police station is a core city need. Each of you, the mayor and each member of this council, has publicly stated their support for, building the, for the building of a new police station in the city of Sheboygan. And as a citizen, I am thankful for that because I think it shows that you understand the eminent need in this city for a new police station. First, and I do encourage all of you to take a giant step forward, building on the solid framework laid out in the last few years to make a police station a new reality. You, as a mayor and a council, have an opportunity to take a historic step forward in addressing a need that everyone agrees is critical to our city's future. I believe Sheridan Park is the best location because it's centrally located, city owned, with no cost of acquisition and will help revitalize the Sheridan Park neighborhood. Neighborhood police stations are a trend across the nation because they connect people with their police department. Neighborhood police stations are working to build better, safer communities, stronger community bonds across America when they're centrally located in the neighborhoods. I ask you to remember one thing. You will be building a police station that will outlive all of us. And it must be placed where it will best serve the city in a central location, not where the special interests of non-city residents say it should be. Secondly, the city faces another core need, and that is a new south side fire station. This has been in the plans for years, and the land was purchased well over 10 years ago. Our firefighters are our first responders. You're all aware of that. Their dedicated service has saved the lives of many. With the city's growth on the south side, it has become increasingly difficult to respond to 911 calls within the critical times required to save life and property. It is time to give the same life saving and property protection to our city's south side as the rest of the city of Sheboygan enjoys. And thirdly, but not least, the municipal court. Of all the administrative challenges that you face, this is one that will have a very imp big impact on the quality of life in the city of Sheboygan. If Plymouth, Sheboygan Falls, and Kohler can recognize the need and value added to their community by a municipal court, 
Then Sheboygan should cut the politics from the debate and do what is right for the city of Sheboygan. Get the municipal court up and running to better serve our residents and our businesses. A municipal court is in the best interest of the city of Sheboygan and it is very important to the city's future. And I do thank you and I hope you have a good night and congratulations to Alderman Van Akron. Uh, I think you'll be a great addition to the council. Thank you. We done? That's it. Thank you. Next we have a proclamation to the Sheboygan Area School District for <coughs> academic excellence and we will have another proclamation for our very own city clerk. I'd ask that uh, Board President Mr. Mark Hanna and Board Vice President Mr. Jeff Squire please step forward. like to read the proclamation. Office of the Mayor, City of Sheboygan, proclamation, whereas the promise of a successful future for our city, state, and na nation rests in the minds and in the visions of our youth who have so much to offer and a sound education allows our children to achieve academic excellence and pursue their dreams. And whereas the Sheboygan Area School District has historically supported quality education and has sought to help foster and nurture creative cooperation and understanding for the good of all students and indeed all our citizens. And whereas we also want to recognize the Board of Education and many dedicated teachers and administrators of the Sheboygan Area School District who work with students to enhance the students' learning experiences and growth into adulthood while fostering a tradition of commitment and caring. And whereas Expansion Management Magazine ranked Sheboygan number two in the nation on its list of metropolitan areas for the best public school systems. I, Juan Perez, by virtue of the authority vested in me as mayor of the city of Sheboygan, do hereby extend my personal congratulations to those, uh, to those people uh, responsible in the, in the city of Sheboygan, to the Sheboygan Area School District, on the occasion of this great accomplishment and encourage all citizens to recognize the Sheboygan Area School District for their commitment and dedication to the students and residents of Sheboygan, Wisconsin. In testimony whereof I hereunto set my hand and cause the great seal of Sheboygan to be affixed, done this, the second day of May in the year of our Lord, 2005. Mr. Mark Hanna, I present this proclamation. Congratulations, keep up the good work. Mr. Jeff Squires, keep up the good work. Thank you. Thank you. And we have one more, please bear with me. Office of the Mayor, City of Sheboygan, proclamation, whereas the Office of the Municipal Clerk, a time-honored position being one of the first recognized and documented public servants, and whereas the Office of the Municipal Court is a vital part of our local government, maintaining official records and documents, records and publishes board minutes, serves as the information center for other governmental agencies and citizens, maintains and oversees the integrity of local, state and national elections within the community, is responsible for issuing licenses and permits, as well as performing a multitude of other responsibilities within local government. And whereas the Office of Municipal Co Co Clerk provides the professional link between the citizens, the local governing bodies, and agencies of the government at other levels. And whereas the Municipal Clerk has pledged to be ever mindful of their neutrality and impartiality, rendering equal service to all. And whereas the Municipal Clerk continually strives to improve the administration of the affairs of the Office of the Municipal Clerk through participation in education programs, seminars, workshops, and the annual meetings of their state, county, and international profession organization. And whereas it is most appropriate that we recognize the accomplishments, accomplishments of the Office of City Clerk, and in particular, Sue Richards. Now therefore I, Juan Perez, Mayor of the City of Sheboygan, do recognize the week of May 1st through May 7th, 2005 as Municipal Clerk's Week and further extend, extend appreciation to Susan Richards and to all municipal clerks for the vital services they perform and their exemplary dedication to the communities they represent. Dated the second day of May, the year 2005. Congratulations.
Tonight we also have um, a notice for a vacation and discontinuous, discontinuance of the unpaved alley near the southwest corner of the intersection of North 15th Street and Geely Avenue. Any interested party that is, that is here would, that would like to be heard? Is there any interested party that would like to be heard? Is there any interested party that would like to be heard? Alderman Groff. Your Honor, I'll move that the hearing be closed. Is there a second? Right. Motion is second. Any discussion? Not. All those in favor, state aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Consent agenda. Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I would move at this time that all our O's be accepted and filed, all our C's be accepted and adopted, and the resolution be passed. And that's for items 3 1 through 3 6. 3 1 through 3 6, yes. Is there a second? <coughs> Discussion? Alderman Davis? I'll second that. Second. Oh, second. Okay. All those in favor, please state aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Communications and petitions. That? <laughs> Communications and petitions to be referred. 337 to 310. Report of officers. 311 by City Plan Commission recommending granting an encroachment to the Skybox Sports Pub and Grill located at 1132 North 8th Street for the purpose of maintaining a patio area. Alderman McGraw. Your Honor, I'll move that the RO be accepted and, and uh, filed and the general ordinance be put upon its passage. <clears throat> Motions are second. Yeah. Any discussion? If not, Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Deberg, Aye. Eberg, Aye. Serta, Aye. Davis, Aye. Groff, Aye. Kittleson, Aye. Manny, Aye. Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Aye. Radke, Aye. Sigali, Aye. Stefan, Aye. Susha, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. and Bauman. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion <clears throat> carries. To be referred 312 to 324. Resolutions introduced. Three, by Alderman Groff, authorizing re retaining outside counsel to represent on-duty city employees in the matters of City of Sheboygan versus Jeffrey S. Duda and the City of Sheboygan versus Kevin J. Priestinger. Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. I would ask for a suspension of the rules. There's motion to suspend the rules and second. Is there any objection? If not, please proceed. Then, Your Honor, at this time, I would move that the resolution be put upon its passage for um, on 326, I mean, excuse me, 325. There's a motion to put the resolution upon its passage. Is there a second? Second. second. Under discussion. There being none, Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Eberg. Aye. Serta. Aye. Davis. Aye. Graf. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Sigali. Aye. Stefan. Susha, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. Bauman, Aye. and Deberg. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 326 by Alderman Groff, authorizing the appropriate city officials to sign and submit application mm -hmm. for an urban nonprofit source and stormwater construction program grant for the, for the Sheboygan Business Center Pond Expansion Project. Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. I would ask for suspension on this document also. There's a motion to suspend. Second. Mm -hmm. Any objections? Proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, the reason this is being suspended is because this application was supposed to be in on May 1st, um, I believe, and um, they're holding it open for us to get this application in tomorrow, and that's why we're asking for suspension tonight. So with that explanation, I will ask that the resolution be put upon its passage. There's a motion to put the resolution upon its passage. or a second? Second. Under discussion? Not. All those in favor, please state aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. 327. 
327 by Alderman Montemayor, repealing resolution number 5590405 regarding the site and building of the city's new police station at Sheridan Park. Alderman Montemayor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would like to, that, to make a motion that the resolution be put upon its passage and take a vote now. Second. Is there a second? Motion second. Okay. Alderman Serna. Uh, thank you, Honor. You know, the, when I talk to the public, the public, they always think I'm joking when I say that sometimes I first learn things through the Sheboygan Press. Um, and this is the case in point. Um, this Sunday, um, there was a communication to the press from Alderman Person Montemayor, um, plans to introduce a resolution to rescind the Sheridan Park decision at Monday's council meeting, but that the resolution would be held until May 9th's council meeting. I did speak with Alderman Montemayor, and she did explain to me that she had changed her mind, yet the public is unaware of that change, and I think it's beneficial that um, we hold this document until what the paper said to give them time to respond. Thank you. Are you making a motion to hold in? Please explain to me what you'd like to do, Paul Maserta. Actually, I, I understand there is another individual who would like to speak on the matter. Is that correct? I need to see a light blink in here. Oh, okay. If not, I'd like to initiate to honor this request for those under the the public on this. I'd like to initiate a three man hold. Three man hold. Is there three? Is there three people? The matter is deferred to the next common next meeting of the Common Council, which which may occur no later than one week after this decision. There's no discussion on the matter. It will be deferred. Alderman Stefan. I guess I withdraw my question. Thank you. Moving along, 328 through 329 lies over. To be referred 330 to, through 335. Alderman Baumann. Thank you, Your Honor. Attached to 329 are actually part of the documents for the Public Works Committee. So if the Public Works Committee people could hold on to that one, just ignore the front page, but please keep the rest for the committee meeting, please. Thank you, Alderman Baumann. See where we're on the. Pardon me? 336. Ordinances introduced 336, 337 will lie over. And 338. I'm sorry, I got it. Okay. Alderman Sagali. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just have a question on 337. I thought when this Gurgle Commission was set up, it was designed to um, save $5 million in, in five years, and I. Not understanding now why all of a sudden we're repealing this and we don't even want to go forward with this. I thought the commission and the people were named on this commission already. So if somebody could please give me an explanation, I would appreciate right. that. Right, that. that is lying over for the next meeting too. That can be discussed. And it just, there's no action going to be taken tonight. Okay. Thank yeah. you, Ms. Meyer. Thank you. 338, 339 to, to be referred. Matters laid over, 2532 RO number 550405 by the City Plan Commission vacating the unpaved alley near the southwest corner of the intersection of North 15th Street and Gilly Avenue. Who's going to do this one here? Alderman Graff. Sure, Your Honor. I would move that the RO be accepted and filed and that the general ordinance be put upon its passage. <clears throat> Sir, there's a motion and a second under discussion. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. S um, Davis. Aye. Graff. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Sagali. Aye. Stefan. Aye. Susha. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Bauman. D. Berg, Aye. E. Berg, Aye. and Serta. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 
One, two, resolution number 20506 by Alderman Groff, Stefan, Serta, Manny, and Montemayor authorizing the transfer of appropriations in the 205 budget. Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. That document as well as 1-3, which is a, a resolution by Alderman Groff, Stefan, Serta, Manny, Montemayor authorizing a transfer of uh, more appropriations in the 2005 budget. I would move that both those resolutions be put upon their passage. There's a motion and a second to put both resolutions upon its passage. Second. Second, under discussion. Mm -hmm. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Graf. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Sagali. Aye. Stefan. Aye. Susha. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Bauman. Aye. Deberg. Aye. Eberg. Aye. Serta. Aye. And Davis. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Other matters authorized by law 340, an RO by the finance director, treasurer, submitting the Harbor Center Marina balance sheet for operations dated March 31st, 05, is submitted by Skipper Marine. And that'll be referred to Marina and Harbor Committee. Other matters, Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, 341 is a communication from Brad Shelton. 3025 North 10th Street, requesting that a law be passed, making it illegal to park in front of a mailbox at any time. And that will go to public protection and safety? 342 is a communication from Jeffrey Bubb regarding his concerns and offering facts on the issue of whether Sheridan Park is the right site for the police station. That will go to building use. 343 is a communication from the John Michael Kohler Art Center, making various requests from the city for the Wisconsin Convertible Classic Car Show and Barbecue to be held on or and around the Art Center's grounds on August 19, 2005. And that will be referred to Public Protection and Safety, Public Works, and Transit Commission. 344 is a communication from Tom Held regarding safety around the crosswalks adjacent to Volrath Park. That will be referred to Public Protection and Safety. 345 is an RO by the city clerk submitting the final plat of the woods located in the southwest quarter of the southwest quarter of Section 11. Uh, Town of Wilson, transmitted by DNH Land Surveys LLC on behalf of the owner, INSCON LLC. And that will be referred to City Plan Commission. 346 is a resolution approving the final plat of the woods uh, located in the Town of Wilson. That will be referred to City Plan Commission. 347 is a resolution <coughs> terminating TIF District Number 1 and authorizing City Finance Director Treasurer to distribute excess increment to overlying taxing districts. That will lie over. 348 is a communication from Henry Young, 1330 North 5th Street, regarding the fact that Dr. Chris Groff and other local citizens are hoping to purchase the sculpture located at the Rotary Intersection and donate it to the city, and is asking for the support of the Public Works Committee in their endeavors. That will go to Public, public Works. I have a, excuse me, I know you were going to do that to me. <laughs> um, if you, if 347, which is a matter that lies over, I've been asked by our finance director, Mr. Rich Kephart, to uh, schedule a short meeting, a sh short special meeting on Monday, May 9th. And uh, you will be getting notice of that. And we need to, to act on this matter to dissolve the TIF district. And also, I would, I would like to uh, announce that I will be taking applications for the position of the mayor's assistant, uh, effective today, tonight, up until lunch Friday at which point I will work with our uh, Human Resources uh, Director, Mr. Ed, <coughs> and make a decision as to uh, who we would like to hire. With that, please do. Motion to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. We stand adjourned. At that time, 
you know, you're in a world of hurt. You got to get rid of it a little sooner. Gonna have to make a whole lot more free throws down the stretch here if you're gonna win this ball game, though, Wombats. Kalu going hard to the basket is cut off. Good defense by Sheboygan. Good job. Good luck, hands. Trying to force the ball inside was Brian Hillis. But, uh, Corey Dahl not able to get it as Gruby tipped it out. Just gonna say, Marty, all of a sudden the Owls aren't kind of penetrating and moving as quickly as they were before. They're kind of sitting flat. Durr had it inside and he lost it. Mills going down Main Street, yep. dishes it off. But there's a foul before on the pass. Committing the foul was Fred Durr, his fourth. Just what you want to do there, get to the basket. Good job there by Luke Mills again. Mills has made his last three. He'll have two more. Looking good. Zavachin, Fisher, and Bullock come in for Waukesha Tech. For Sheboygan, we have Seaver, Mentink, Mills, Gruby, and Similink in the ball game. Mills can't get that second one to go. It's 51-48, Sheboygan by three. Wow. Shot by Fisher, no good. Mills, Shot good put. timing, but he couldn't control it. Another outside jumper, this time by Hillis. And he's got the three-pointer. We're tied at 51. 6.30 remaining in a ball game. There he is. Take it. Nice little touch. Ooh, couldn't get it to go. Good fight by Brian Similink. It's a jump ball. Possession arrow goes to Waukesha Tech. Carl Gruby coming out and coming in is uh, Ron Rakowski. Jump shot is no good. Rebound by Mills. Oh, pardon me, Rakowski. Just an outstanding job on the offensive board, or defensive board, excuse me, for uh, the Wombats today. Not allowing second shots. Mentic, oh, nice feed to Simulink down the lane. His shot is missed, but he tips it up and in. Good second effort there by That's Brian. that pass we wanted before, Chris. That time he completed it to Brian Simulink. Oh, you gotta get a hand up on him. Kalu for three. Seaver was just too slow there to get there. Waukesha Tech up one. Mills driving hard to the basket. Looked like the defense got underneath him, but no call. Sheboygan gets it back. Seaver from outside the line. No good. Joel Kalu with the rebound. Kalu drives it right down the lane and lays it up and in. Not good defense that time by Sheboygan. Waukesha Tech up 56-53. Whole lot of reaching going on. Seaver trying to tie it up. Can't get it to go. Good call by Don Green. That ball went off of uh, Luke Mills. 